American Novels. A romantic story of the early days in Southern California. Soon after that territory had been annexed by the United States at the close of the Mexican War. An American classic that pictures eloquently the woes of the Indians as well as the old Spanish life of that era. NBC's University of the Air brings you the first episode in a two-part version of Helen Hunt Jackson's Ramona. Another in our series of books that live. American Novels. Ramona came to live at the Moreno estate when she was four years old at the death of her foster mother, who was the Senora Moreno's sister. From the first, Ramona shared equally with Felipe, the Senora's only son. Equally in everything but the Senora's love. On Felipe, she lavished a burning passion. On Ramona, a brittle tolerance. One day, when Ramona was ten, her curiosity overcame her fear of the formidable Senora, and she attempted to unravel the mystery which had always shrouded her identity. Senora? Yes? Well, what is it, child? Senora, why did my mother give me to the Senora Ortegna? Your mother had nothing to do with it. It was your father. I wish I knew if my mother were dead. Why? Because if she is not dead, I would ask her why she did not want me to stay with her. Who has been talking to you of these things, Ramona? Answer me. I heard one come to Luigo. Twice I heard him. He said mother was no good and that my father was bad too. Ramona, you must not believe any such thing. When you're a woman, I will tell you all that I know myself about your father and mother. All you have to do now is to be a good girl and say your prayers. And when Father Salviadera makes his visit here, he will be pleased with you. Oh, but... I said I would tell you when the time comes. Don't ever speak to me about it again. Ramona was 19 now. No one would have guessed by her beautiful, smiling face or manner that she'd known a moment's sorrow. But deep inside her was the knowledge that she was accepted by the Senora from a sense of duty rather than love. And there had scarcely been a morning that she did not say to herself, Perhaps it will be today that the Senora will tell me who I am. But the Senora never told. And Ramona never asked. And the deep affection that existed between Felipe and Ramona only kindled the jealous senora's resentment of the girl. For since the death of her husband, her love for Felipe had become more and more possessive. And so it was that Ramona had looked forward for many weeks to the visit of Father Salviadera, whose friendship was one of Ramona's most treasured possessions. He was still two miles from the Moreno house when Ramona met him and before even speaking, knelt for his blessing. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ramona. Father Salvia, dear. Ramona, my daughter. Are all well in the place? Yes, Father. Felipe has been ill with a fever, but he's up and about now. And the Signora? She's well. And you? Are you well yourself, Father? Oh, I am tired, Ramona. But happy to be here again. And to know that I'm not late for the sheep shearing. Who are the shearers this year? Indians from Temecula. Oh? I believe Felipe said the captain's name is Alessandro. Oh, yes. Alessandro Assis. I've known him since he was a small lad. And his father before him. Excellent people. So Felipe says. I have not seen him. <laughs> Though Ramona had not seen Alessandro, he had seen her. And from that moment, he'd loved her. The next morning in the chapel, seeing her kneeling beside Felipe, he decided they must be betrothed. 
It might well have turned out that Ramon and Alessandro would not have spoken to each other had it not been for that morning in the shearing shed. You sure you don't want to take your place up on the roof for a while, Senor Felipe? I've been waiting to pack this fleece all year, Juan Khan. Don't worry, I'm not giving up my post. You just see that the men keep working. <laughs> we can count on that, senor. The Alessandro. All right, senor. Every man of us can share a hundred sheep in a day. Some more fleece to be packed, senor. Right up, sir. We'll fill that pile of sacking bags and more before the night is over, senor. Yes, I... Uh, <coughs> You're all right, senor? Yes. Yes, fine. It's just the dust from the fleece. It's quite thick up here. What a day. Never have I known the sun to beat down so. At least we have the shelter of the shed. The senor Felipe in the open on that roof for the whole morning. Aye, and packing all those bags. Uh, I don't envy him. (laughs) No chance of this wool going amiss in the market. More fleece, senor. What? Yes, senor. I am ill. What? 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 what has happened? He has fainted. Yes, he will fall to the ground. I heard a cry, Juan. What? Felipe. He is dead. Oh, no. Oh, do not be alarmed by these idiots, seniority. He's only fainted. Well, let me climb up there to him. Holy Virgin, no, seniority. You will kill yourself. It is not easy for a man to reach those rafters. But how will we get him down? Senorita. Yes? It will be nothing for me to bring Senor Felipe down. In my arms, he is no more than one of the lambs yonder. Will not the senorita trust me? Yes. I will trust you. You are Alessandro, are you not? Yes, senorita. I am Alessandro. It is a miracle how Alessandro's playing soothes Felipe. I believe it has saved my son's life. He didn't have a moment's real rest before. May the saints bless you for asking Alessandro to play, Father Salviadera. Oh, it was Ramona who suggested it. She had heard Felipe say how much he enjoyed Alessandro's violin. Hush. Hmm? Perhaps we should leave Felipe now, Father. He seems to be in a sound sleep. Alessandro! Oh, good morning, Father. What is that you are doing, my son? It's a splint for Juan Khan's leg, Father. Oh, yes, poor Juan Khan. Uh, It is of this I wish to speak to you, Alessandro. Yes, Father? Uh, This senor would like you to let the men go without you and have you stay on in Juan Khan's place for a time. But there is yet another shearing, Father, at the Ortegna Ranch. It would not be good for me to break the promise. But could not someone else take your place, my son? Are you talking about Alessandro staying? Yes, my child. He feels he should go on with his band. Oh, he must not. We can't let you go, Alessandro. We need you here. And Felipe would be lost without your playing. He's far from well. Can't you stay? Yes, I can stay, senorita. I will stay so long as you need me. Come in. Ah, oh, Alessandro. <laughs> How is the leg today, Juan? Well, uh, no better, I'm afraid, Alessandro. No bones take long to knit. <laughs> but it is one comfort to know that you are taking care of my work, Alessandro. Now, tell me, Alessandro, has the senora spoken to you of staying on here permanently? Yes. And uh, what did you say? I have not made a decision. I know my father has need of me in Temecola. And the Senor Felipe has need of you here. You know, I have often thought that if he does not get up from this sickness, the Senora will not be long behind him. It is but for him that she lives. And who would have the estate in that case? Hmm. I have never been able to figure out. 
Would it not be the senorita? Hmm. <laughs> Let the senora hear you say that. Hmm. The senorita will get little more than enough for her bread out of the Moreno estate. But don't tell me that you haven't noticed that the senora hates her. Well, I cannot understand why why anyone would hate the senorita. Well, <clears throat> there was a scandalous tale about her birth. Uh, come closer to the bed and I'll tell you what I know. But you must promise not to breathe a word of it. You perhaps know that the senorita was the adopted daughter of the senora's sister. Yes. But a real mother was an Indian. Indian? Well, you know, what what's wrong? Well, you're as pale as Father Salvador. It is nothing. Then the senorita is not happy here? Sure. Uh, she would never complain. And the rest of us love her very much. Uh, including the Senor Felipe? Well, could he help it, man? Are, are they betrothed? Oh, saints preserve us. No, you would have to bury the Senora. Uh, but we were discussing your staying here. I, I want to try to persuade you. You have speak. persuaded me, Juan. If my father gives his consent, I shall stay. It was strange to see how easily Alessandro fitted into his place in the Moreno household. In the matter of Felipe's health, the senora abided by all of Alessandro's suggestions. One afternoon, as Ramona sat on the veranda embroidering, Alessandro came from the workshop carrying a rawhide bed. The senora has given me permission to place it here on the veranda, senorita, and senor Felipe is to lie here. But Alessandro... Is it not harmful to sleep out in the open air? My people do not think so. Unless it is cold, senorita, we like it better. Mm, it is good to look up at the sky at the night. Yes, it would be. I never thought of it. I should like to do it. Is something wrong, Alessandro? You look at me so strangely. Forgive me, senorita. You made this bed yourself, Alessandro? Yes, senorita. You're very skilled at handiwork. I always enjoy seeing the things you've made. Then, then perhaps the senorita would not be offended if I... What, Alessandro? Some weeks ago, I, I made for the senorita two nets, such as our women use to carry all sorts of burdens. But after I finished them, I... I felt them unworthy of the senorita. Oh, Alessandro, let me see them. I have them here in my basket. Oh, they're lovely. And they are strong, senorita, like iron. I wove them from the fibers of a flax plant. Oh, so very beautiful. Is it carried by putting this band across my forehead? Just so. Well, the senorita must have seen Indian women wearing them. No, Alessandro, I've never seen one before. How strange I should know how they are worn. This was the first of many gifts which Alessandro gave to Ramona. Simple gifts, yet great ones, because they were given and received with love, though no such words had been spoken between them. For once the senora was unaware of the situation in her home because she had schooled herself to be unaware of Ramona. But Felipe was quite aware, and he knew that love such as that could not go on indefinitely without expression. But the suddenness with which it did come was a surprise not only to Felipe, but to Ramona and Alessandro as well. They had gone to the artichoke patch where Alessandro was showing Ramona how to make flowers from last year's seed pods. And so, in no time, I have made a wreath for you, senorita. Oh, it's too lovely for me. <laughs> I shall put it at the feet of the Madonna in my room. And I shall tell her you made it. <laughs> that is the first time I've heard you laugh, Alessandro. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I have much on my mind, senorita. Your people? You feel responsible for them? Yes. And yet there is nothing I can do. Already thousands have been turned out of their villages by the Americans who say they own the land. Then it would be a good thing for you to stay on here, Alessandro. Do you feel the senora wants me to stay? I think so. But I'm not sure. It's not easy to be sure what the senora wishes. Senorita, must must you always stay here? I... I have no other home. I was the senora's sister's adopted child, you know. I... I heard so. The worst thing is, Alessandro, she won't tell me who my mother was. I don't even know if she's alive or dead. Let's not talk about sad things, but pleasant things. About your staying here. Would it truly be a pleasure to the Senorita Ramona if... if I stayed? I should be very unhappy if you left, Alessandro. Senorita, then... then you will not be angry if I... If I say that I... I love you? Oh, no, Alessandro. I'm glad. But you, senorita, you could not... You do not... Yes, yes, Alessandro, I do. I love you. Oh, senorita, do you mean that you will go with me? That you are mine? Yes, Alessandro, yes, I will go with you. I love you. Oh, beloved. Senora. Silence, shameful creature. Go to your room. And as for you, you will answer to Senor Felipe. Out of my sight. Go, Alessandro. Yes, Senorita. As you wish. Such brazen calmness. Senora. Oh, speak not to me. I will take you back to the house. Senora. You hurt my arm. You need not hold me. I will go with you. I'm not afraid. Oh, no. We shall see how quickly this bravado changes to cringing cowardice. Senorita Ramona Ortegna. The senora locked Ramona in her room. And it was long after dinner in the evening that she unlocked the door and found Ramona kneeling before the statue of the Virgin in her room. Get up. I have brought you some bread and milk. Thank you, Senora. I do not care for any. No? Just what do you have to say for yourself? I tried to tell you this afternoon, Senora. If you had listened, you might not have been so angry. Neither Alessandro nor I have done anything wrong. We love each other. We're going to be married and go away. Marry? Marry an Indian? I will never permit it. I have never disobeyed you, Senora. But this is different from all other things. I have promised to marry Alessandro, and you are not my mother. But I stand in a mother's place to you. Senora, the whole world cannot keep me from marrying him. Oh, you talk like a fool. Do you not know I could shut you up in a nunnery tomorrow? No, you cannot. Who is there to hinder me? Alessandro. Alessandro. A beggarly Indian on whom my servants will set the dogs if I bid them. You would not dare. Felipe would not permit it. Felipe! How dare you pronounce his name? He will never set eyes on you when he hears the truth. You are wrong, senora. Felipe is Alessandro's friend. So, the senorita thinks she is all-powerful in the Moreno house. We shall see. Come to my room, and I will explain to you why you will not marry the Indian Alessandro. In the Senora's room, behind the statue of St. Catherine, there was a hidden compartment, and from this secret place, she took a large black box. It contained a small fortune in jewels, which had been the Senora Ortegna's. There was also a letter to the Senora Moreno, which she read to Ramona. And all of these jewels are to be given to Ramona on her wedding day, providing she marries worthily and... and with your permission. That is the end of the letter. But it does not say who my mother was. There was no need to write that. Everybody knew your mother was a common Indian. My mother? Yes. 
A common, low Indian. I told my sister when she took you, the Indian blood in your veins will show someday. And now it has. Yes, Senora Moreno. The Indian blood in my veins shows today. I understand many things I never understood before. I'm glad I'm of Alessandro's people. Where is my mother? I will go to her. She will be glad that Alessandro loves me. I know nothing about your mother. Some low, vicious creature your father married when he was out of his senses. He married her? Yes. His name was Angus Fale. My father. All of these jewels are yours, Ramona, if you marry worthily and with my permission. Otherwise, they go to the church. Yes. That is where they should go. I don't want them. You will not promise to give up this Indian? Never, senora. Never. Then the consequences be on your own head. Felipe had also witnessed the scene in the artichoke patch. But he felt it would be wiser to let his mother speak to him of the matter. He had every confidence that when she did, he would be able to win her agreement to the marriage. But Felipe, more than anyone else, was helpless against his mother's genius for wielding the thoughts of others. Would you be willing that your own sister should marry Alessandro, my son? Would you? No. No, but... <laughs> I knew you could make no other answer. Ah, what would you think, Felipe, of having her go back to the sister school for a time? Mother, you wouldn't shut the poor girl up in a convent. Can you advise anything better? Advise? This is what I advise. To let Ramona and Alessandro marry. Without our consent? If they can't marry with it, they'll do it anyway. Could we possibly give a stronger endorsement to their marriage than by keeping them here? I suppose not. But then, do we force them to run away? Oh, no. If they go, it will be of their own accord. You do not look happy, my son. I can't help feeling we're... We're simply turning Ramona out of the house. Turn her out? Ramona has a home here as long as she will accept it. It is not just, Felipe, to say that we will turn her out. Oh, forgive me, dear mother. This miserable business has so upset me, I... I can't seem to see anything as it is. Oh, thank you for your precious sympathy, Felipe. If it were not for you, I should long ago have broken down beneath my cares. Yes, we must settle this quickly. I shall send for Ramona at once. I wish to impress upon you, Senorita Ramona, that we consider you a member of our own family. So long as we have a home, it is yours. If you choose to leave it and to disgrace yourself and us by marrying an Indian, we cannot help ourselves. Have you anything to say? Senora... Perhaps I shall not speak with you again before I go away. I thank you once more for the home you've given me for so many years. And you too, dear Felipe. I shall always love you as long as I live. Are we to understand that you are taking your leave now? I do not know. I've not seen Alessandro. I've not heard. Alessandro has gone. Gone? Oh, no. Not gone, Felipe. Only for four days, to, to make a life. Oh, what did he go for? Why did you let me go with him? Oh, why did he go? He went because my son told him to go. My son thought, and rightly, that the sight of him would be more than I could bear just now. Oh, you have been cruel. God will punish you. <laughs> It was sunset of the 18th day since Alessandro's departure. Ramona was wan and haggard. She ate nothing and scarcely slept. The senora stayed so close to Felipe, there was never a chance to talk with him alone. Ramona began to think that she would die.
she had been too weak to do anything but lie in her bed for four days. And then suddenly, she became vividly aware. It was not a sound, not a sight. She sat up quickly in bed, bewildered, alert. Alessandro is not dead. He is not dead. He's somewhere near. I'm well again. I must go out to meet him. Alessandro is near, I know. She had walked for more than a mile down the river road before she saw the figure of a man leaning wearily against a tree. Alessandro! Senorita. You've been ill. Oh, Alessandro, what is it? Oh, my senorita. I could not go on without one sight of your face. Alessandro, what are you saying? <laughs> senorita, do you not know what has happened? No, I know nothing. Oh, dear senorita, I, I have no home. My father is dead. My people are driven out of their village. I am only a beggar now, senorita. We've all been starving. But, Alessandro, I can't understand. Who has the land now? Americans. It was decided in a court that they owned our land. They are going to steal all the land in this country. Where have your people gone? Most of them to Pachanga, about three miles from Temeco. But the land there is poor, and there is so little water. Oh, oh, my senorita, I cannot burden you with any more of my sorrows. Alessandro, I have something to tell you. I am an Indian. I belong to your people. I knew it, senorita. And you never told me? One can't swore me to secrecy. But are you not glad, Alessandro? Yes, my senorita. Then... Then why do you want to leave me? My senorita knows my life is hers. She can ask me to go into the fire for her. And I would gladly. But I I cannot take my senorita's life to throw it away. She's tender. She would die. She cannot lie on the earth for a bed and have no food to eat. I'm strong. I can work too, Alessandro. I'm not afraid to lie on the earth and God will give us food... Oh, Alessandro, take me with you. I'd rather die than not be where you are. Take me with you, Alessandro. Senorita. My senorita. Ramona by Helen Hunt Jackson is one of the best of America's novels, brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Next week, American Novels will present the final episode in the dramatization of this story. We hope you'll be listening, and that you'll pay a visit to your local public library very soon. You'll find there countless hours of entertainment for the asking. Many American novels in the 1947 summer series are included in the useful handbook of the world's great novels, which you may obtain by sending 25 cents to World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. Ramona was adapted for radio by Agnes Eckhart. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom, and the orchestra was conducted by Bernard Berkwitz. The entire production was under the direction of Norman Felton. Ramona as a child was played by Florine Sears and as a young woman by Geraldine Kay. Hilda Graham was heard as Signora Marino and Larry Alexander as Alessandro. Others in the cast were Jim Humland, Art Peterson, Bill Rath, and Art Hearn. Everett Clark was the narrator. This is Don Elder. This program came to you from Chicago and has been a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. American Novels. An American classic of Southern California that pictures eloquently the woes of the Indians of the old Spanish life at the close of the Mexican War. NBC's University of the Air brings you the second episode in a two-part version of Helen Hunt Jackson's 
Ramona. Another in our series of books that live American novels. Then if you're glad my mother was an Indian, Alessandro, why do you want to leave me? Because the Americans have taken our village, my senorita. And though I would gladly offer my life for you, I cannot take my senorita's life to throw it away. She's tender. She cannot lie on the earth for a bed and have no food to eat. I'm strong. I can work, too, Alessandro. I'm not afraid to lie on the earth, and God will give us food. Oh, Alessandro, I can no longer stay in the Senora Moreno's house. Take me with you, Alessandro. Senorita. My senorita. As Ramona walked through the halls of the Moreno house, gathering a little food and a few personal things, she had no regrets in leaving the place that had been her home since she was four. Ramona had always known the senora hated her, had kept her only because of the promise made to the senora's sister, who had adopted Ramona and then died shortly afterward. But for Felipe, the senora's adored son, Ramona had a different feeling. Daring not to speak to him for fear of arousing the senora, she left a note. Dear Felipe, Alessandro has come at last, and I'm going away with him tonight. I'm sorry it has to be this way, but your mother would never consent to our marrying here. Thank you, dear Felipe, for all your kindness. I shall love you always. Ramona. My senorita, you are so burdened. Oh, it was nothing, Alessandro. I told you I am strong. I have enough food to last us for a while, and I brought your violin. Oh, my blessed one. The violin should bring a nice sum of money. Ah, but this is a night for surprises. See what I have for you. Baba. My own Baba. Oh, it is a miracle. I called him oh. softly from the corral fence, and he bounded over it and <laughs> followed me. But it... It worries me to take him, my Why, dear? He's more mine than anything else I had. Felipe gave him to me when he was but two days old. Mm, however, the senora may think I stole Baba and try to have me arrested. Or stealing by Indians is a dangerous offense. We will travel at night and rest in the day, Mahal, lest they pursue. Very well, Alessandro. We'll do as you say, though I'm not afraid. Not in the least. But to whom will we go? There is a priest at San Diego who is a friend of the Indians. Father Gaspara. Yes, he will help us. It was a poverty-stricken chapel with crudely whitewashed walls and cheap candles burning in tin holders. After the ceremony, Father Gaspara took them to the decaying adobe building which served as his home and where he kept the book of marriage records. This book I'm very proud of. It dates back to 1769. Now, uh, where are you from? Jamaica, Father. Uh, the village the Americans took over the other day? Yes, Father. A burning shame. The most dastardly thing I've seen yet in this land forsaken of God. Uh, where will you go? Well, we will go to the village of San Pasqual, about 15 miles from here. My cousin Isidro has had man there. The village was established by a decree of the governor of California. They have a paper in the governor's own hand to that effect. But, however, I have come to feel that nothing is safe from the Americans. What do you think, Father? I think the United States is a government of thieves and robbers. God will punish them. But why do I pray? My son, tell me your names again. Alessandro Assis. And the woman... Mahia. Is that all? Uh, Mahia Fahil. Father, I... No, no. Put up your money, son. But I sold my violin. Father, I can pay. I'll take no money from a Temecula Indian. Goodbye. Perhaps you may still reach San Pasquale tonight. God protect you, my children. Ramona endeared herself to the people of San Pasquale immediately. And two days after their arrival, 
Alessandro heard a piece of news which startled him out of his usual passive demeanor. My hair! My, my hair! Alessandro, what is it? There are cattle and sheep. What do you mean? Last spring, my father sent one of our herd down to Isidro to graze here. A hundred sheep and fifty head of cattle. And many of the cows have calved. Oh, we are not beggars as I thought. Oh, Alessandro, how wonderful. Yes. I told you God would give us food. One year and half of another passed. <laughs> she has eyes like yours, Mahia. Blue like the sky. She's a lovely baby, Alessandro. But now our house is not large enough. Just two rooms. Not large enough for all the love and happiness it holds. But big enough for us. Do you not think we're the most blessed couple in all California, Alessandro? Today, yes, Mahia. For tomorrow, I cannot answer. Alessandro, home at noon? Why is that? Alessandro, what happened? What is wrong? Speak to me, Alessandro. It has begun. What? What has begun, Alessandro? Oh, tell me. Last year, Isidro rented a canyon at the head of the valley. Yes? To a Dr. Morong in America. Isidro didn't need the land and thought it a good chance to make some money. He took every precaution. Had Father Gaspara act as interpreter for him. It was a written agreement. But when the lease expired and Isidro asked the doctor if he wished to renew it, the doctor said the land was his and that he was coming there to build a house and live. But how could he? The doctor said the land did not belong to Isidro at all, but the United States government, and that he had paid the money for it to the agents in Los Angeles. Did Isidro go to Father Gaspar? Yes, yes, and they both went to a lawyer in San Diego and showed him Isidro's paper from the Mexican governor of California. But the lawyer only laughed and said that the paper was worthless, that it was all very well when the country belonged to Mexico, but it now belongs to the United States. We have American law now, not Mexican. What did Father Gaspar say? He was in a rage, but the lawyer only laughed at him. You'll see it. It is as I said, my hair. There is no place safe. We we can do nothing. From that day, Alessandro was a changed man. Hope had died in his bosom. And in a few weeks later, while he was plowing, an American approached him. Look here now. Be off, will you? This is my land. I'm going to build a house here. This was my land yesterday. How come it is yours today? Now, come now. You look like a reasonable kind of fellow. You just clear out with you and not make me any trouble. See, the land belongs to me and my brother. And our papers from Washington last week. Now, you may just as well go peaceably as to make a fuss about it, don't you see? Yes. I see, senor. I am not surprised. I knew it would come. I will not give you any trouble, because I cannot. But it is very hard, senor. Uh, well, here yeah, I know it does go a little rough on fellows like you that are industrious and have done some work on the land. But you see, the land's in the market. I paid money for it. The senor is going to build a house? Uh, yeah, I've got my family in San Diego, and I want to get them settled as soon as I can. We have a very good house of two rooms. It would save the senor's building. And there will be $300 worth of wheat in July. What will you give me for them? I suppose you know I can have them without paying for them if I choose. No. No, you cannot, senor. And what's to stop me, I'd like to know? I shall stop you, senor. I shall burn down the sheds and corrals, tear down the house, and before a blade of wheat is reaped, I will burn that too. Uh, what will you take? Two hundred dollars. Uh, all right, it's a bargain. Here. Here's the money. Fool I am, though, for buying out an Indian. <laughs> In 
It had been a sad two years in the Moreno household since Ramona left. And now, the senora was dying. Felipe, what a son thou hast been. Oh, Mother dearest. Felipe, behind that statue of St. Catherine. Look. Nothing's there, dearest mother. Be calm, I'm here. No, no, Felipe. There is a door there. Secret door. Look. Don't tell me now, mother dear. Wait until you're stronger. There will not be another time. Open. Look. Believe me. Mother. She... She's gone. After the funeral... Felipe discovered the secret door behind the statue. And there he found the letter from Senora Ortegna concerning Ramona and the jewels which rightfully belonged to her. But one thing remained to Felipe now, to find Ramona if she lived. He left the next day. But whenever he met Indians who knew the couple, they denied it, thinking they were helping Ramona and Alessandro. Dear... Alessandro? Yes? Yes, my hair. We've traveled most of the day since leaving San Pasquale. Where are we going? My, my hair. I cannot tell what to do. It seems I'm going mad. I, I do not know what I think. All my thoughts seem whirling round. Do you... Do you think I can be going mad? Oh, my love. Let us go to Los Angeles and not live with the Indians anymore. You could get work there. I could do sewing, too. Go to live among the white people? If they drive us out of our villages by the hundreds, what would they do to two alone? If, if Mahaya would not be afraid, I know a place high up on the mountain where no white man has ever been. There is water and a little green valley. Oh. Mahaya would be afraid. Oh, yes, Alessandro, I would be afraid. All alone on a high mountain. Try something else first, Alessandro. Is there no other Indian village you know? There is Taboba at the foot of San Jacinto Mountain. But it is a poor little village. My hair would not like to live in it. And I, I do not think it would be safer than San Pasquale for long. Let us try it anyway, Alessandro. As night came, a fierce wind blew from the north, and the snow began to fall in great blinding gusts. It is an old sheep corral, and a hut not too far from here, if we can but reach it. Let us try, Alessandro. But, my hair, I fear for you and the child, you will freeze. Come, come, my Benito, come. I know you are cold, but it is death to stay here. Come. Numb. My hands are numb. Perhaps we will die here. But I've said it to death as well. Sorry to handle you so rough, ma'am, but I had to get you into that there fire. Fire? Wrecking your plum out of your head in the cold. Your husband's already taken the baby into the shelter there where my wife's son is. My baby? Yeah, here we are. My hair. Oh, the baby, Alessandro. She is alive. Are you all right? She'll be fitter than a fiddle when she gets to this here far. So come on up, dearie. Oh, but the baby. Now, don't fret yourself. Oh. I'm a cuddling the little one. How you just rest. Oh, thank you, senora. Senora? That means lady, Ma. Oh, oh Lord, honey, I ain't no lady. Everybody around where we live just calls me Aunt Rye. Oh, I like the name. <laughs> this here is a mighty pole shelter. We just put up here the night to get out in the storm. Are you warm, Joe? Yeah, not very, more. But I ain't cold, nuther, and that's something. Well, reckon it's time for introduction. Wins the Ryan Hires family. Joe says our only son. He touched down with lung trouble, so he come out here all the way from Tennessee to try to make him better. They tell me they got some hot springs around here to a heap of good. You are American? I'm son. Yep, that we are. 
Do you mean Mexicans? We are Indians. Indians? Oh, good Lord. Now, Ma. <laughs> well, to be frankly with you, I never took you in if I know that. I've been plum scared. But I reckon a Dunlar and Indians can be just same as near neighbor in Tennessee. And we have learned that Americans can be very kind. <laughs> It was a sad day when the hires moved to San Bernardino, which was their original destination. But Alessandro saw them again, much sooner than he expected. Alessandro, well, you're just the man I wanted to see. Been trying to rain so that I could get over to see you. Say, the government ain't on the side of them thieves like you thought. I know they couldn't be. They just sent out a man to take care of the engines and nothing else. And there's a doctor, too, to care for you when you're sick. Doctor? That is why I came... The baby is very sick. Well, come on. I'll take you to his house. Maybe he'll drive out to see the baby. Is he an agency Indian? A what? Does he belong to the agency? Is his name on the books? Well, no. No. He never heard any agency till I was telling him just now. Well, you ought to have taken him to the agent first. But the baby's awful poorly. Yes, you told me that before. Senor, I have brought a horse that can take you to Saboba in three hours. Will the senor doctor come to look at my child? I will pay you what the white man pays you. There's no man of any color could pay me for going 60 miles. <laughs> Come, would not. Did you not say the government had sent him to be the doctor for the Indians? That was what they said. You see, it is a lie, like the rest. Then we will take her to him. Maya. Oh, why did I not think of that before? You can fasten the cradle on Baba's back and he will go ever so gently. We must start right away. It is a wise thought, Maya. Come, Alessandro, I will hold her while you fix the cradle. We must be quiet. Yes. I think she's asleep. Alessandro. She's so still. So still. Alessandro? Maria. Alessandro! They stood quietly for a long while, looking at the small mound of fresh earth. Then Ramona spoke. Alessandro, take me away. Anywhere, I don't care. Anywhere, so it's not here. Would Mahia be afraid now on the high mountain? The place I told her of? No. No, I'm afraid of nothing. Only take me away. It is well. We will go to the mountain. We will be safe there. We will hide forever. Because they would not need the two horses, and food would be scarce, Alessandro took Bob and Benito to the hires, who agreed to care for them in return for their use. When they reached the top of San Jacinto Mountain, Ramona drew a long breath of contentment. At last. At last, Alessandro, here we are safe. This is freedom. Can my hair be content? I can almost be glad, Alessandro. I never dreamed it was like this. It was a wondrous valley. There was happiness and contentment. And after a year... The Virgin has been good to us, beloved. She's given us a daughter again. But alas, my hair... Her eyes are like mine, not yours. I'm glad of it. I was glad the first minute I saw them. It is ill fate to have the eyes of Alessandro. They look ever on woe. Dear Alessandro, it is a sin to always mourn. Father Salviadera said if we repined under our crosses, then a heavier cross would be laid on us. Worse things would come. Yes, that is true. Worse things will come. There was no real healing 
for Alessandro. His hurts had gone too deep. Slowly his brain gave way. For long periods he would be all right. And then a time would come when he would lose himself completely. And afterwards have no recollection of what had happened. Oh, Alessandro at last. I was afraid something had happened to him. Why does he race the horse so? My hair. Why, Alessandro? Whose horse is this? Huh? What? This is not our horse. No. No, it isn't. Where is my horse, then? Holy heaven, Alessandro. Take the horse back immediately. They will say you stole it. But I left my pony there in the corral. I'm sure I did. How could I ever have made this mistake? I... I must have had one of my sicknesses. Let me take it back, dear. Let me go down with it. They'll believe me. Mahea, you think I would send you to Jim Farrar's corral? It was there I left my pony. Yes, I will ride back myself as soon as I have rested. But now I'm heavy with sleep. All right, dear. Rest a while. And then take it straight back. We must not wait too long. The dog is barking. Something is wrong. I will go see. Mr. Farrar! He will get my horse tied up right out in broad daylight! Why, you... Mr. Farrar, let me explain. Alessandro, what... Alessandro! Teach you damn minions to leave off stealing our horses. Get out. Alessandro, my Alessandro, my love, speak to me, <laughs> Alessandro. The Indians of Cahuilla, at the foot of the mountain, gave Ramona home. As the days wore on, it seemed Ramona did not care to live. Nothing would rouse her from the deep coma in which she lay. Everyone felt she would die. And well she might have, had not Felipe, after a year of fruitless searching, arrived in the village of San Bernardino. Whoa! Oh, oh, there! Oh, 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 oh. Say, stranger, I'd like to run you over. I'm sorry, my mind was on something else. Didn't see you coming. Well, that ain't a very good policy when you're crossing the street. Oh, yes, I said. That horse. That horse. Yeah, fine feller, ain't it? It's Baba. It must be. That's his name, all right. How'd you know? Where did you get it? Well, both of them belong to an engine couple. Live atop of that mountain yonder. Names of... Ramon and Alessandro? Very same ones. Fine folks. I found them. Oh, bless you forever. It must be the saints led you here. On the way to the mountain, Felipe learned of Alessandro's death. Within a few hours, he joined Aunt Rai at the bedside of the thin, feverish Ramona. Aunt Rai brewed some medicine from herbs and spent patient hours forcing it through Ramona's lips. Is she... Shh. Let's be quiet. I told you she'd come there. Mm-hmm. Now, now, honey, you just lay quiet. Oh. Felipe and me are here, and we are going to stay. You ain't got nothing to be afeard of. Felipe? Yes, dear, I'm here, too. I'll look after everything. When you're well, I'll take you away. Home? With you? I'm alone, dear Ramona. My mother is dead a year. Dear Felipe... Home with you. Life ran smoothly in the Moreno household. Both summer and winter had each its own joys. And the greatest of these joys was the little child, Ramona, on whom Felipe could lavish the affection he dared not show her mother. Ramona? Yes, Felipe, dear. I've been thinking for a long time that Mexico is the place for us. California is now American, and we're Spanish. But I fear you'd not be happy away from the estate. Oh, Felipe, my most beautiful dream for Ramona would be that she should grow up in Mexico. Oh, then it's settled. I've had many handsome offers for the estate. We'll sail for Mexico as soon as all arrangements are made. Dear Felipe, how good you are to me. Oh, Ramona, my love. Oh, can you not love me? Felipe, my brother. No, I'm not your brother. Felipe. Forgive me, my sweet one. But I've loved you so long. So 
so long. Do you still need me? I've never loved anyone else. I've always loved you, Felipe. But do you not know that part of me is dead? You could not want me for your wife. Only give yourself to me, my love. I will be your wife, Felipe. If you're sure it will make you happy. It's all I ask of life. <laughs> They were married in the cathedral in the city of Mexico. It was a new world, a new life. Ramona might well have doubted her own identity. But when the notes of doves calling to each other fell on her ear, her eyes sought the sky, and she heard a voice saying, Mahea, Mahea. This was the only secret her loyal heart kept from Felipe. Few husbands were so blessed as the Senor Moreno. Sons and daughters came to bear his name. The daughters were beautiful, but the most beautiful of them all, and it was said, the most beloved by both father and mother, was the eldest, the one who was only stepdaughter to the senor, Ramona. Ramona, daughter of Alessandro, the Indian. by Helen Hunt Jackson is one of the best of America's novels brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Next week, American Novels will present The Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston, a book which won popular acclaim and recognition as a forerunner of the American dialect novel. We hope you'll be listening and that you'll pay a visit to your local public library very soon. You'll find there countless hours of entertainment for the asking. Many American novels in the 1947 summer series are included in the useful handbook of the world's great novels, which you may obtain by sending 25 cents to World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27. Ramona was adapted for radio by Agnes Eckhart. The music composed by Emil Soderstrom and the orchestra was conducted by Bernard Berkowitz. The entire production was under the direction of Norman Felton. Ramona was played by Geraldine Kay and Alessandra by Larry Alexander. Others in the cast were Maurice Copeland, Duke Watson, Alma Platt, Cliff Sabir, Johnny Kuhn, Don Gallagher, Jim Humland, and Hilda Graham. Everett Clark was the narrator. This is John Conrad speaking. This program came to you from Chicago and has been a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent station. School bells will ring out next month for 28 million American school children. But at least 2 million of these youngsters will be marked absent when school opens in September. They are the victims of an unprecedented crisis in American education. Since the beginning of the war, our schools have been going downhill to a shocking degree. Many of our best teachers, dissatisfied with overcrowded classrooms and impossible working conditions, are leaving the teaching field. This situation needs your immediate attention. As a parent and citizen, take an alert, active interest in improving educational standards and in aiding teachers in your community. Our teachers mold our nation's future. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>